What's up everybody? Hope you all are doing well today. We are looking at a projectile motion problem where we're going to be kicking an object at an angle. So as usual, see if you can set up and solve this problem on your own and then go ahead and watch the video to see how you do. So yeah, let's go ahead and draw this out. Let me make this small so we have plenty of space here. So let's go ahead and draw this out. So essentially what we got is we have our soccer player and they're going to kick a ball at an angle. Okay, the ball's going to go a certain distance and we're going to be looking for two things. We're going to be looking for how far the ball is kicked or what we would call the range of the ball. And we're looking for what is the peak height that the ball reaches. Okay, the maximum height. So in doing these types of problems, again, try to draw it out first. The main thing I want you to notice is that this velocity here is in two dimensions. So we're kicking it at 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. That means part of our velocity is horizontal and part of our velocity is vertical. And so when we set up this problem, we're gonna do all our known values so we'll do what, we, what I call the uh, givens of the problem, but we're gonna isolate into two dimensions. So we have our X dimension and we have our Y dimension. Okay, and then we're gonna run through our givens for each. So what I want you to notice again is that our velocity in the X direction initially is going to be, well, this value, this component of our triangle going this way. Okay, so recall we're going to use a cosine of that to find it. So this will be 20 cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, and so when you calculate that out, you get 17.3 meters per second. So that means our horizontal velocity to start with, it's not 20, right? It's 17.3. And that's in the horizontal direction. Now we do the same vertically. So notice we're kicking it up. This one is the sine of the angle. So we're gonna go 20 sine of 30 degrees. And for that one, we're gonna get 10 meters per second. That means our initial velocity in the y direction is going to be 10 meters per second. Okay, I'll go ahead and subscript that. So the initial x and this would be the initial in the y direction. So that's a major difference between horizontal projectiles and angled projectiles. The rest we're just going to, um, it's pretty much the same. So for example, um, if we look at the accelerations in the X direction, once the ball's in the air, nothing is speeding it up or slowing it down, right? And so in the horizontal direction, I should say. So that's gonna be zero again. And then in the Y direction, well, the only acceleration uh, acting on it is gravity, right? So that's gonna be um, negative 9.8. Okay, let's keep going. The displacement, so the X displacement is what we're looking for, right? So that's unknown. The Y displacement, now notice here, I guess I didn't say this in the problem, but we are gonna assume the ball lands at the same height at which it was kicked. So vertically speaking, we are actually the same height, right? So our vertical displacement is gonna simply be zero. So we're at that same position in both. All right, anything else we know uh, in the X direction? We also know the final velocity. If the acceleration is zero, that means the final velocity is the same, right? So that would be also 17.3. Okay, in the Y direction, there's nothing else we know. All right, so what we're gonna do is, remember on these projectile motion problems, the key variable is the time. Because once you know the time, for one direction, you know the time for the other, okay? Because there's no like X time and Y time. There's just simply time. So if you notice here, we have enough information to calculate our time. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna choose delta T equals, delta D equals uh, VOT plus one half AT squared. Honestly, this equation is your best friend on these problems. You're going to be using this most of the time. So our displacement here is zero. The initial is 10 
times t plus 1 half negative 9.8 times t squared. All right, and then we're just going to solve for t. So we can factor out a time here. We'll go 10, and then let's just do the math here, 4.9 times t. So remember, when you have this, you have actually two solutions. You have time equals 0. Okay, well, that makes sense, right? At time equals 0, the ball's on the ground, obviously. So the one we really want to know is the second one. So 10 minus 4.9 t. So when you solve that, you're going to get uh, t equals 2.04 seconds. So that's obviously the time we're looking for. That's the time when the ball's over here. So remember, what we're looking for here is the horizontal displacement. So we now know the time in the horizontal direction. So we can um, we can also find the displacement. Okay, so I'm going to use the same equation here, but this time we're going to only use our x variables. Remember, this is these were our y variables here. This one we're going to be using our x variables. Okay. All right, so our displacement is what we're looking for. So this is again the horizontal displacement. Our initial velocity was 17.3. Okay, times time. Now remember, in the x direction, our acceleration was a zero. Okay, so actually, we do know the time, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So we'll use the same time, 2.04, and there we go. So my displacement then is what's that? 35.3 meters. That's telling me the range or the horizontal displacement when the ball hits the ground. So let's go ahead and clean this up and we'll do the second part of the problem. All right, so part B of this problem, we are looking for the maximum height. So the ball goes up and it does come back down, but we don't really care about that second part. We just care about how high does it reach. All right, so when we do our givens for this one, I mean, the x values are pretty much the same, right? We still have an initial velocity of 17.3. We still have an acceleration of zero. Okay, now the time's not the same because we're looking for the time just up to the peak. Now in the y direction, our initial velocity again is still the same, gonna be 10. And um, acceleration is still gonna be negative 9.8. Now, our height is obviously not zero because we're not back on the ground. So we are looking for um, for that height, right? So the key thing is as this is rising, at the top, it stops rising, okay? So it temporarily stops in the vertical direction. Now, one key thing to understand is it does not stop in the horizontal direction. So the V final, let's call this like at the peak, we're looking here at the peak at the top. The V final at the peak is not zero in the X direction. In fact, the V final at the peak is still 17.3 because there is no acceleration horizontally, right? So all the velocity is horizontal. Okay, but none of it is vertical. And so that actually helps us out here because we now can find that displacement. So that's what we're looking for. I'm going to write this as the displacement at the peak or the max height. You can also see it that way. All right, so let's choose our equation to find that. For this one, we're going to be using v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2ad. All right, so again, the v final is 0 at the top. v initial is 10. And then we're going to go 2, negative 9.8 we're looking for a delta D. So do some algebra. We got negative 100 divided by 19.8, negative 19.8, and that gives us a max height of 5.1 meters. All right. So one last final thing I wanted to do is um, let's find the time to the peak because I want you to see what happens when you do. 
So if we go V final equals V initial plus A T, we use the final velocity of zero, the initial velocity of 10 plus negative 9.8 times T. Notice what you get. You get a time of 1.02 seconds. Well, if you remember that time was exactly, that time is, is exactly half of the total time. And this should make sense. This is a symmetrical journey here that we have, right? And so if it takes 2.04 seconds to go the whole way, then it would take 1.02 seconds to make it to the halfway, right? So I do wanna caution you on this one because this is only true when it's a truly symmetrical journey. So when would it not be symmetrical? Well, it's not symmetrical if number one, if you have air resistance, right? If you have air resistance, which we're ignoring in this problem, then it would not be symmetrical, okay? Right, it's gonna kind of slow down and maybe it takes a path more like this, okay? And then the other reason is if it doesn't end at the exact same height, okay? So if like, let's say uh, a goalie catches it or something, okay? If a goalie catches it, then this is not a symmetrical journey. So it wouldn't be halfway. Or let's say, you know, the field's not level. The field's not level and it ends up somewhere below, okay? Somewhere down here, it's off a cliff or something like that. Then it's not symmetrical. So otherwise though, if it is, you can use this fact to, to help you to solve this problem. All right, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions below and have a great day.